sleep, about four or five cups of coffee in. So I'm picking kids up, picking kids up, and I pull up to a, a student's house. They open their door, they're coming out the house, and I get a text message from my father. And it says, hey, just want to let you know, mom's in the ER, and we'll keep you posted. Now, I don't get text messages like that often. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so, uh, so I see the text, and I got, I got kids coming out the house, and they're excited because, you know, if I didn't come pick them up, they, they, they weren't going to be able to make it to Bible study. So I'm picking these kids up, and I read this text message. I have two choices. Do I call Pastor John and say, hey, my mom's in the ER, and I need to be by her side. I have that choice. And if you know John, John's going to make sure he will do whatever he possibly can to make sure that that happens. John sees people as people. Or I can keep going. <coughs> I can continue to pick kids up. Yes. Keep focused on the job at hand. Guess what I do? I text back. Thanks for the heads up. Keep us posted. Mm -hmm. Put my phone up. I continue to pick kids. That was my response. Yeah. So John's been talking about remember, release, and receive. And today we will talk about respond. We have a choice in how we respond. Verses, in verse 5 it says, Oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. It says you are my portion. Lord, you are my portion. In the, in the New Revised Version, it says, Lord, you are my chosen portion. My, my chosen portion. So my question to you is, what's not our portion? What's not our portion? David, in this scripture, just said, God, you are my chosen portion. So he has chosen God to be his portion. He's chosen God to pour into his cup. So what have we chosen to go in our cup? Because it is our choice. We can choose God or we can choose we can choose something else. Amen. Mm -hmm. So what have you chosen to go into your cup? Right. Hmm. <laughs> I had an easy time choosing God as my portion because my mom has chosen God as a Yes. It's engraved in my heart, my mind, body, and my soul. Yes. My mom is also poured into my cup. Yes. So in staying on the path, in choosing God as my portion, it was easy for me because I had seen it for years. Yes. Okay. Another thing, too, if you got a mom like mine, and she knows you were supposed to be somewhere, and you show up at the ER, it's like, what you know? Yes. I'm going to be okay. Yes. Why? Because God is my portion. Yes. Amen. Amen. You got that right. Yes. Come on, y'all. Yes. 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 Yeah. Respond by making the Lord your chosen portion. Verse 6. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. Verse 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Why? Because he has filled my cup. Yes. Some of us need to bless God because we're sitting on a full cup and we don't even know. Hoo <laughs> hoo. Yes. Amen. Some of you woke up this morning, you're sitting on a full cup. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now you have to walk here, you're cold, you're sitting on a full cup. If y'all had in your car, you got a pretty full cup. All right. <laughs> all yes. Without heat. <laughs> Woo! Mm -mm. <laughs> full cup in it. Thank you, Jesus. I have to make sure I see my cup. Because I can look at somebody else's and get caught off guard. Yes, yes. yes. Right. Verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Mm -hmm. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. When we look at right hand, the right hand means deliverance. The action of being rescued or set free. Deliverance. The action of being rescued or set free. What are some of the things that God has rescued us from? From hell. Yes, ma'am. What are some of the things that God has rescued us from? 
Some of us have been rescued from addiction. Some of us have been rescued from abusive relationships. Some of us have been, have been rescued from situations that we clearly put ourselves in and God said, you know what, I have made you a place to escape. God has rescued us over and over and over again through his delivering right hand constantly, over and over and over again, we have the full cup. Amen. And then when you look at when you look at the end of the text, verse 8, it says, He is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. That's a spiritual, y'all. Yes. They made that in the 1930s. Civil rights movement was just starting to build up some steam. Women's suffrage was building up some steam. They also had the Great Depression that was happening in the 1930s. We forget about that a little bit. We had a Great Recession a few years ago. These cats were dealing with the Great Depression, and they were still saying, I shall not be moved. Mm -hmm. These are people who didn't have money in their pockets. They would go to work, they wouldn't get paid, which means they, they couldn't buy stuff, which is what our economy is built on. Yeah. They couldn't do that, but they were still saying, I shall not be moved. Mm -hmm. They had no food on our table, but still they're saying, I will not be moved. Now I gotta admit, there are some days where I'm moved by a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And I have to make sure that God continues to be my portion. Yes, right. Some of you, you go to work, somebody bumps you the wrong way, you all move. Your husband didn't do the dishes. You move stuff. <laughs> Your kids got all A's and the B in one class moved a little bit. We have to remember that we cannot be moved. Reading that text message, I had a choice. Am I moved? <laughs> or do I refuse to move? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Our response. Our response. Music to be moved. Verse 9. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. Hope, such a powerful word. Mm -hmm. To expect with confidence, to trust. Now let's plug that in. My flesh will rest in trust. Mm -hmm. My flesh will rest in trust. Yeah. My flesh will rest in trust. I trusted the Lord because he has always filled my cup. He's been my portion. He's been my mom's trust. He's been her portion. He's been her hope. So I just exercised what I knew, which was God was good. Yes. All the time. And for those of you parents in here, don't quit on your kids. They're exercising what they know from you. Mm -hmm. So after seeing my mom using God as a portion for years, he's filling her cup. I'm doing the exact same thing at 30 years old. Now, there were some times in my life where my dad flipped over my mattress in my teenage years and found some stuff under there that wasn't supposed to be in there. They didn't quit on me. Amen. Because God was their portion and he was filling their cup. Yes, yes. I tried to commit suicide twice in my teenage years. They didn't quit on me because God was their portion. Amen. And he was filling their cup. And they knew one day I was going to get it, and I was going to choose God as my portion Amen. and allow Him to fill no my cup. Amen. No matter what. Amen. Amen. No matter Amen. what. Yes. yes. Don't give up on yes. your kids. Amen. Don't give up. Don't quit. Amen. Yes, Verse ten: For you will not leave my soul in shoal, nor will you allow your holy one to see corruption. You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The path of life. Since God is my portion, my hope, he has shown me the path of life. So I respond with that understanding. I move in that direction as he leads. To allow God to be the path of life for you yes. is to have clarity. Some of us were unclear on so many different things in our life, but to have God as your portion, to have him fill your cup, is to be clear on what's next. Yeah. Mm. Trust in God. Amen. I was clear. Yes. God, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know you're going to take care of it. Yes. Yeah. Therefore, mm -hmm. I'm clear. Mm -hmm. I have a clear conscience. Yeah. I may be teared up. I might be a little flustered in the face. Yes. My emotions might be going a little crazy because my mama is in the ER. But yes. guess what? I'm yes. clear yes. that I need to trust that you have taken care of the situation. Amen. So I respond by walking the path he has shown. That is a single life focus. Single life 
focus. Not multitasking, single life <laughs> focus on God, allowing him to show you what path to go on. Regardless how I feel or what's going on around me, I still have a purpose. I still have a destiny. I still have a call. Amen. No matter what's going on around you, you still have a purpose. You still have a destiny. You still have a call. We have an opportunity to do some things. We have an opportunity to fill other people. Yes. Because God is our portion. That's right. So when we overflow, we have a chance to overflow some other individuals Amen. that Amen. need their cup being filled. Yes. Amen. I was at Allen Correctional Institute last Sunday. Preached to 75 to 100 guys that need some hope. Some individuals, they serve 30 years in prison. They go to the parole board. The parole board says, you know what? I need you to, I need you to do an extra five years. Those guys need some hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's holiday season and they're locked up. Those fellas need some hope and being able to fill their cup. Show me that God used to have a purpose for me. Yes. I'm so green behind the ears. I'm walking in there like, no, no, no. What can I do? Where can I go? Where do I need to be at? It's almost like the Ico out here. Had to fill out a packet this thick, background checking me. Whole time there was no question. God, yes. I'll go. I'll go. That's where you call me. I'll go. That's where you're leading. I'll go. You want me to speak to them? Yes, sir. I'll go. Some of us had said, God, no. Hmm. I'm cool. You filled my cup, but hey, I got a choice. I ain't going to go. That's us choosing something else to be our portion. That's us not trusting in God, not believing in his faithfulness. You know, the whole night, I was, November 4th, I was in a different mode, man. We got the Bible study. 35 kids are looking at me to leave. It's teenagers, man. You mean these are kids that are worried about getting shot on their way to school? I know y'all have seen the news. We got 14-year-olds getting shot in the street. These kids know when they come to our program, they're going to be safe. They're going to have fun. I was, in, I, was in, I was in different headspace. I told my adult leaders, hey, I need y'all to take overnight. Y'all need to play some games or something like that. I'm going to be in my office. I'm going to do some counseling with some kids. And, and you know, I need to, I need to get away for a little bit. Man, my kids had so much fun with playing a game. Chicken on the roof. So I don't know what the fuck. I was trying to counsel some kids and do some blasting. Got to fill my cup with my adult leaders because they, they would say, nah, man, you need to leave this. My adult leaders were like, hey, man, do what you need to do. We got this. Don't worry. My cup is full. Amen. And at 755, we're about to say it's over 80. 755. I walk into the Bay Area, 35 kids playing games, stuff like that. I tell my wife, hey baby, we gotta, we gotta shut it down. I gotta get these kids home. So she gets the kids in a circle. We usually don't circle up, hold hands and stuff. My kids think everybody got to now for some reason. I don't touch this <laughs> you get that kid in sweaty palm, you praying. So they're in this circle. And there's a moment in that circle. They're holding hands. And they're serious. And I just tell them, hey, make sure you hug your mom. Make sure you tell your mother that you love her. Make sure that you appreciate the gift that you have in a mom. Make sure that you're grateful for her because my mom is in the ER right now. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I got to go check on her right after this. But make sure that you are grateful for the gift that you have in a mom because there's some people that don't have that. Seven of my toughest kids, these kids chew nails and spit sugar. <laughs> my toughest kids, man, crying. Crying because they didn't appreciate their mom. And what God did, he gave me an opportunity through listening, through allowing him to be my portion and allowing him to fill my cup. In that moment, I was able to fill theirs. Thank you, Jesus. And we wait, and we wait for these moments for years. These are some of the kids that I, that on any given Tuesday, I'm not able to reach, but on this moment, 
On that night, I was able to. Now imagine what would have happened if I didn't show up. Yes, yes. I said, you know what? I got to check out. My mom is sick. Those kids would have been without that response. They would have went without that story. Yes. They would have went without their cup being filled. And it would have been on me. Yes. It would have been my responsibility mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. And I would have missed out on that, on that opportunity. We can't miss out on an opportunity. Yes. Because there's somebody that needs you. No matter how old you are, you have a purpose, you have a call, you have a destiny. Amen. And when God calls you to that life direction, you walk it and you walk it with no fear. And you trust. Amen. You trust. Yes. God trust. You've got to trust God. It was brought to my attention in my design meeting that we were able to get this sermon together and everything. I just don't make this stuff up. There's a group of people that come together. They make me sound real smart. <laughs> they are. In that design meeting, it was brought to my attention that even if my mom was in the ER and things weren't going so well and things may not have turned out the way that I wanted them to, I still would have walked down that path. Now think about that. If my mom would have went to be with Jesus that night, I still, still, still would have walked that path. Yes. My mom's here today and he's in hot heels and everything. <laughs> <laughs> got to choose God as our portion. Mm -hmm. We have to refuse to be moved and we have to walk the path that God has shown us. Yes. There's only three things we got to do in path. order to respond to that cup being full. Because our cups are full. Mm -hmm. That's what this gratefulness thing is for. We may not have all the money to buy your kid every single thing on the face of the planet, the Xbox One, the PS whatever, Four. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> But your cup is full. Yes. Oh, yeah. Your cup is full. Some of you and doctor gave you the diagnosis, you'd never be able to walk again. Guess what? You shredded yourself up for your Woo -hoo! <laughs> Amen. steps like a tram. Yes. Amen. Cup is full. Yes. Choose God as your portion. Amen. Refuse to be moved and walk the path that God has shown. We all bow our heads forward.